my mother's favorite color. Lumpia. Why Lumpia? Because it reminds me of UP. <laughs> Fried Lumpia. It's okay everywhere. I can eat it anywhere. I go to the States, Lumpia. I go to Germany, they serve me Lumpia. Kahit saan, may Lumpia. Kasi kung saan may Pilipino, may Lumpia eh. North Country. Mm, ito ron. Mm, sexual harassment sa ng minor. Tapos yung isa yung ano yung ito, North Country is the first that comes to my mind. And the other of course is a uh, grabe Meryl Streep movies. I'm a fan of Meryl Streep. Mm, so Iron Lady. Super, yeah. So, uh, Iron Lady uh, Sophie's Choice, where she was made to choose between her two children by this German officer. Choose which one I will be sent to the gas chamber, which one will be saved. Sophie's Choice, what a movie! Talagang tusok talaga sa puso yung Sophie's Choice niya. Book recently! Vader Ginsburg. Yeah? Why? My life. Yeah? I think it's, uh, it inspires me. And, uh, she was often the lone uh, dissenting in the center. Eh? And uh, her her life really uh, uh, it gives me you know, uh, lessons back. How she experienced uh, also discrimination at the start. And uh, well, she made it through because she was a brilliant. She was always uh, in defense of uh, women's rights. It's been so long since my, ne my nieces read Harry Potter. Okay. And I think uh, the one where they fought, the ending, the last part. Huh? Harry Potter 7? Yeah. And then he added the The one when they had the... No, no, they... The, this uh, young uh, wizards had to uh, defend their... What? Uh, their uh, university. Mm -hmm. You know, the battle between good and the evil wizards. Right? I love it. The story is always the same. It's a battle mm -hmm. between the good and evil. Siyempre, honor and excellence. UK, my parents, honor and excellence. Why honor first? Honor excellence. first, kasi if you don't have honor, it doesn't matter if you're smart. So what if you're smart if you're a cook? <laughs> about honor? I used to play tennis here a lot. Ah, undergrad ako, tennis, rally, takbo! Ang dang quezon circle. I weighed 115 pounds. <laughs> Be sure and prove Because they are smart and they don't share. I'm asthma. Obligations and contracts. I got 99 out of 100 my final exams. Minus one in constructive trust. Professor Justice Lega Romero asked me when I give in my blue book, Miss Guanzon, how was it? I said, perfect. <laughs> Justice Romero said, nobody gets a perfect score in my class, Miss Guanzon. <laughs> my English, what? Constructive trust! I encountered constructive trust again 25 years after I had a case of constructive trust where a man who was married bought a house in the name of his common law wife 
for children. I won the case in the municipal trial court of uh, SNC. I'm very proud of the instructor class. <laughs> but I didn't get the perfect score in the obligations and contracts. But my favorite moment was when I was on top of the roof and it was dusk and I had a lot and I had quiet time. Roof of the school. When I was a law professor, that my students were very, you know, uh, creative. So every semester they had, uh, they dressed up like uh, in uh, Harry Potter. They dressed up as magicians and divided themselves into four uh, groups, Gryffindors, Lutheran, like that. And so they would march in togas and colorful scarves in the College of Law. And the dean was then uh, Marvick Leonel, knew. And you would say, Professor Guanzi's class in local government. That was my favorite uh, event in the UP College of Law. And then there was another time when the students, the one, uh, and this is the evening class, which is really more daring, you know, they're older. They dressed up in, you know, in uh, Magic Mike. <laughs> but uh, they, they, since you were not allowed to to uh, hubad, you know, in the college, they just use this mga mascara ba? <laughs> na mga hubad na <laughs> But uh, that was fun because I always made sure na funny yung classic ko. Eh. May relax ba? Para may inspire sila. So it became our trademark, this Harry Potter uh, costume uh, once every semester. Oh my God! God! I slept at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock studying. Wake up before 5 o'clock and take a walk around my dormitory just to wake up my, you know, my senses, my God, before I make coffee and study again. Sometimes I reverse it. I sleep early at 10, wake up at 3, study until I go to class. I have an 8 o'clock class with Professor Fernandez. And uh, up to 1 o'clock or 12 o'clock. Lunch and uh, a quick siesta on the, ta on the table of the library, maybe 15 20 minutes, and then study again. At that time, we really had to study using the books, the scrap. Supreme Court reports annotated because there, there was no, in, uh, no uh, soft copy, no internet. And uh, well, the photocopy was expensive. So you, you really have to be very smart and remembering things and then making your digest, what we call the case digest. So I studied. I had like an average of four hours a day sleep. But in between, studying and relaxing, walking around. Uh, well, I joined the sorority, the UP Delta Lambda Sigma, which was my, really my, you know, my, it became my, uh, Uh, you know, a, a nice uh, source of friends in the dorm and the school and the college and outside. Up to now, uh, I'm very active in my sorority alumni. <laughs> I loved literature when I was in high school and my father was very good in literature and memorized the same thing. Uh, I would have been, a, if I were not a lawyer, I would have been a teacher. But of course, I would have taken my PhD. Because my father was so loud, so... He said, oh, you still haven't decided what to do with your life? Go back to school. <laughs> Maybe I should have gone to law school. Maybe I should have gone back to school. Double course. Double course. So that's why we're mostly lawyers, doctors, dentists. Because we were too young to get jobs, so my father said, go back to school. Even during summer, you know, he told us not to hang around the house. Because 
So you're wasting your time. You 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 take up summer classes. You you learn more when you're in the campus than uh, here. You're just gallivanting here in the house. <laughs> Why? Very disciplined yung tatay namin. Because they really need a champion and they need our support. Plus, I'm also a person with disability. I have osteoarthritis and uh, I have a deformed right knee. But I also have a nephew who has autism. I have been uh, very supportive of the Philippine Autism Society. And uh, the other PWD groups can always call on me for support or, or whatever I can contribute. They, they really need a representative in Congress. This is the, the genuine marginalized sector that does not have a voice uh, in Congress. That's why I'm uh, fully supporting P3, PWD, party list, number 54, sa inyong balota. <laughs> I don't, my mother, Elvira Villena Guad. She was magnificent. Ganda na nanay ko. Smart, smart, brain. Grabe. Tapang din. Courageous. She was a teenager. The war broke out. She called her father, Papa, do not surrender. Do not surrender. So they had to evacuate. Her father was male. No? God. And uh, she was uh, in politics. Board member. Vice mayor. Council politics for 32, 33 years and she never buckled down even when an opposition, uh, you know, uh, dominant uh, party of the governor was uh, was their opposition party. My mother was well loved by the people. When she passed away in 2020, we received 106 wreaths hundreds of mass cards when her funeral car entered the uh, Cadiz city there were some old folks women mostly who threw, who threw flowers on the in front of the car the firemen turned on their hoses the funeral march was very very long just like her father Pedro Villena when he was there She's, my mother was really beyond compare. <laughs> it's that's why I, I fall short. I always fall short because <laughs> she was both brave and gracious. Me, I fall short on the gracious. <laughs> but I, I miss her, and but I always say, you know, she wants me to be happy, and uh, I have enough. I have enough very, very good memories of my parents that see me through whenever I feel bad, I feel lonely, I feel, I feel a heavy weight on my shoulder. Uh, that's, that's my, those memories are my go-to place, places. Good memories, uh, loving memories. Um, also, my brothers and sisters and I are very supportive of each other. We, uh, when one of us is in danger, we circle the wagons. Oh, there are people who want to be like me. <laughs> yeah, on Twitter, on Facebook, they say, uh, I want to be like Rowena Aguanson when I grow up. I say, nah. I think I wasn't always like this. I am like this now. I am what I am today. These are the principles I believe in. Because my parents taught me well. I have a loving and supportive family who are God fearing and we all love our country. And uh, that's why we are not afraid. We are not afraid. 
to those our privileges, to those us not. The Marshall law. My father was judge in the sugar country. My mother was board member, but we all protested against Marshall law. My sister had to leave guilty Diliman, uh, disguised using another name, because she could no longer return to her dormitory. I had to leave my dorm in high school, high school because we, we didn't know what names, if our names were there in the list of the military. So we just had to leave our dormitories. And then, uh, I took the uh, midnight bus home to Cadiz to create the house. My mother saw me enter, enter the house, she cried because I was, my brother came home earlier and, and, and he, he was asked, he, they, my father asked him where I was and he said he didn't know because he couldn't find me in the dorm because at the time there were no phones, you see, so I just left. I was, it was just next door, but uh, everything moved fast, happened fast. You know, Siliman, like UP, was one of the hardest hit during March alone. The Man University was closed for three months and because it was like the UP of the South. The uh, protest movement uh, was very strong there in the South. Uh, yun. Oh, naman. Pagkakasang Pilipin na lang. Ang, ang hirap naman na trillions, trillions now in dollars in debt eh. Parang we're starting over after Marcelo. Kasi Marshallo, ganun din ito eh. Yung corruption, yung colonialism, ang, ang uh, foreign debt, ang domestic debt. Alam mo, military abuse. Parang we're starting over. Uh, ganun na naman man. Dubog na naman tayo sa utang. Pero may pag-asa pa tayo? Oh, may pag-asa tayo? Kung pipiliin ng Pilipino at manalo, yung tama, yung marunong. Hindi naman pwedeng popular lang sila eh. Marunong ba yan sila? Puro naman sila ano eh. Puro sila propaganda. Ang mga golden years ang pinagsasabi ng mga ito. Marcia Law was the worst, the worst, the worst. Never again. Ano nga ang picture na lang? Done? Picture na lang. Ayun, yeah, tired man. Oh. Hey guys, this is Rowena Guanzon. Rated RBG. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification button.